From the News Channel 5 Network, this is the Tecus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. Welcome to Tecus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour, where we explore the many issues that arise due to aging, disability, and unexpected illness. I'm your co-host, Tim Tecus, and today we're talking about aging in place. According to an AARP study, about 90% of seniors would like to stay in their homes as long as possible. But will they be able to do that successfully? So today, in today's episode, we're going to talk about the resources, what's out there in the community to help our seniors stay at home as long as possible. And I'm Barbara McGinnis. The baby boomer generation has really given uh, rise to an industry helping folks stay at home. We want to stay at home as we as we get older. And there are certified aging in place specialists that actually help people do that. Mm -hmm. And they look at how do you design the house? How do you remodel the house? What can you do to help stay at home longer and stay there safely? And founder of A Better Nest, Cindy Natch, is here to tell us a little bit more about that. Like, how do you do my home modifications, Cindy? Well, thank you for the opportunity today. Um, home modifications can be a little thing or they can be a lot in terms of how much we do within a home modification. So a house works for us or against us as we age. It's kind of interesting when we're of childbearing years, we make sure the house is safe for our kids and it's functional and it's comfortable. Right. But then as we age, we kind of go, mm, we kind of forget about doing that for ourselves. So when we look at a house and, and thinking about is it appropriate for aging, it comes in very many viewpoints, from very m many viewpoints. So we kind of start small and, and, and look at how the individual or the couple or family is, lo is living within their house today. And we're looking for certain things. We're looking for that, are they comfortable? Is it safe, of course? And is it really livable? Right. Okay, yeah. so um, I have an aging parent. Right. You know, assume, assume that I have an aging parent, <laughs> like a lot of us do. Sure. And, and, and my mom is, is preparing her house. So mm -hmm. what are the typical home modifications you know, that, sh that she should be thinking about? What are you looking for? Well, I think the, the, the most general home modifications that most everybody thinks about initially are, do you have a ramp or do you need a ramp or do you have um, grab bars in, in the bathroom? So those are low hanging fruit, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but we're looking yeah. for lighting. We're looking for, um, our own is our own body telling us something maybe we've had a knee surgery maybe our knees are great and maybe we our vision as most of us over the age of 50 start to have lower light um, issues so we're looking at how we functionally um, interact with our house and once we we typically do a home livability assessment and that okay. is really an open-ended assessment of Tell us about yourself, and we use a, a list of questions that really bring out a lot of information relative to how that individual, that couple, interacts with their home. What about if you're, if it's not your knees that's giving you trouble, but you have dementia, or you're caring for someone mm -hmm. at home with dementia? Special modifications for that? I think so. Um, dementia uh, really can impact. Um, that individual, each individual differently. But I think there's some general consensus that um, lighting plays a big impact in, in terms of the calmness and um, um, that person with dementia kind of living in their home. So for instance, um, we've seen many patients and folks that, that have, or, that have um, been diagnosed with, um, with Alzheimer or other dimensions that interact throughout the day differently and lighting impacts. It might be an open window that they've had for 20 or 30 years, maybe a view out to the lake. Um, but as time goes on, that light impacts their mood. So lighting is very important with someone with dementia. In addition to that, um, um, as dementia progresses, often safety becomes a bigger issue because often folks with dementia wonder. So having um, appropriate safeguards for door locks, um, and just making sure that, that that individual can't freely wander out into the backyard, get lost, etc. Yeah, I'm just curious, what particular about the lighting? Like, do you make mm -hmm. sure the lighting in the house is a, a different bulb, a different wattage? What, what can you do? It kind of depends. It's the bright light that often impacts folks. 
So um, it's it's really you can you can kind of do a step by step trial. In mm -hmm. other words, well, number one, is there enough light? Have you ever been in someone's house where you walk in and they're simply you can't see because there's not enough light? That may be a telling sign with that individual who already has dementia. They may have already lowered the lights in their house. Mm -hmm. As opposed to someone, we've had um, individuals that um, just became agitated as the day went on in a summer day where the light came up and over their house and into their house and the agitation level ro rose. So it's, I haven't seen a lot of studies on this, mm -hmm. um, but it's, I know it to be true, um, mm -hmm. that, that you just have to be, whoever the caregiver or whoever the cognitive individual is in the environment really needs to pay attention to mood changers, changes and lighting. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you one other area with folks with dementia, um, again, not a lot's written about this, but this is something that we've noticed, is over a time when dementia progresses, the shower becomes a point of threat. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so what we would suggest is, for folks with dementia, is that you use a hand washing wand, you start low in the shower, usually it's an assisted shower, and you're bringing that water up slowly, and then you're mm -hmm. working it in a, in a slower pace. Don't go like, put it on your head and bang and, it on their head. Yeah, because yeah, it kind yeah. of freaks folks out. I would out. imagine, it would freak me out <laughs> too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it sounds like this is really not a DIY or uh, do-it-yourself project then. That's well, why you consult a certified uh, aging in place specialist? Yes, a certified aging in place specialist is actually um, a designation by the National Association of Home Builders. NAHB.org is where you can find some in your area. I think we've got about 200 in Tennessee. Okay. Um, what that means is that no, no entity is ever uh, knows everything and is perfect, but, but certified aging in place specialists really have been trained. And if anyone is going to the effort to have that designation, we have a, a vast interest in, in learning as much as possible. There's so much to do with home modifications, simple assistive devices, things that can help folks in the early stages of, of most any thing that's happening as we age, whether yeah. we need a little help with hearing or a little help with, with vision. Um, there's tons of assisted devices. So we try to be schooled in that way on, on many assistive devices and just really try to say, is this the right environment for you as you age in place? Some of some uh, folks that we interact with, they know they want to stay in their home and they really start to talk about different modifications that they've been thinking about. So if you head long, you know, full into making a modification without a thoughtful process uh, at the beginning. We like to lay a good solid plan, not just for this year, not just for five years, but for 10 or 20 years, and not just for the individual who's maybe having a little issue right now, or maybe nobody's having an issue. We want to take the collective experience of who's living in the house to really make that plan. And once you set a good plan for aging in place, it might, it might mean modifications. It might just mean some assisted devices. Or it might be this particular scenario, maybe you need to think about moving. Mm -hmm. So how do you get started? Like, what's the beginning part of a plan? The beginning part of the plan, in our perspective, is that we do a, about an hour and a half home livability assessment. Mm -hmm. And that livability assessment is the conversation like we're having today. Tell us what's going on, tell us what your goals are. Not getting too much in the weeds, but really also us getting an eyeball on the actual living environment. The house, how does the bathroom look, how does the bed look, uh, bedroom look, how does um, how's the kitchen you know, a lot of folks end up having burn-related issues if their vision is low. So yeah. we're looking at all the real particulars about how egress, um, how we're getting in and out of the house. We're looking at everything, really. And then a lot of conversation. Right. It just so, doesn't happen by a box, so, you know. So you have that conversation, mm -hmm. and then you develop a plan. Mm -hmm. Does, I mean, mm -hmm. is this free, or how much does this cost to do this? It, um, we develop a plan. Usually, most folks in the in the arena that we're in, and there's not a lot of us, but but sometimes uh, aging in place specialists and certified aging in place specialists are are the front end of a contracting organization, gotcha. a contractor. Gotcha. So um, our model's a little different. We're independent. We're not tied to contractors, but. But what we're trying to do is create a plan that works for that client. So some of the contractors have aging in place um, specialists on the front end, and they do, and it's just they don't charge for that. Mm -hmm. um, those of us who do charge for our services, we're generally between the 60 yeah. and 120 per hour range. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah. um, and so we're going to put a con we're going to put contact information for you yes. up here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I know you mentioned uh, NA NAHB National Association of Home Builders. I guess we can we. 
people can find you through that organization? Um, they, you can, nahb.org, and okay. look up Tennessee, and you, it'll be listed by individuals and then by uh, by our business names. Well, Cindy, thanks for being here. You're, you're with a better nest, yes, right? Yes, that's right. And then when we return, stay with us. We'll be discussing medical care in the home, so don't go away. <laughs>